I mean, I feel really bad for this girl all around. She lost her horse, but ultimately at the end of the day, I feel worse for the horse and I feel bad. I honestly feel like this horse was failed in a lot of ways. Hey bitch, and welcome back to another video of me talking about people I hate. Guys, we are back with another Raleigh Reacts video. Oh. I'm so excited. If you're new to my Raleigh Reacts videos, these are videos of me reacting to people usually doing some crazy shit with animals. It doesn't have to be horse abuse, but a lot of the times it is. We learn a lot from these videos and they are intended to be educational. Again, these videos are just my opinion, so feel free to leave your opinion in the comment section down below. Furthermore, these videos are all video submissions sent by you guys. So if you would like to send me a video to react to, you can send it to raleighreacts at gmail.com right up there on the screen and in the description down below. We have a lot of videos we need to talk about today, starting with a recap of my last video. And uh, if you haven't seen it, you have to go watch it before this video because it is a crazy one. A lot of shit went down in that video, you guys. However, before we get into all the craziness that is going to be today's video, bitch, I wanna say a huge, massive thank you to this video's sponsor, which is HelloFresh. HelloFresh's recipes are so delicious. If you guys have packed schedules this fall, this is the time to try HelloFresh. They have a weekly selection of over 30 recipes and 70 different convenience items that are all delivered right to your door. HelloFresh's services effortlessly save you time, money, stress. I absolutely hate going to the grocery store. It's my least favorite thing ever and I'm not a very good cook and I also don't like wasting food so HelloFresh is so perfect for me. It allows me to make really good recipes, save money, save time, and also save produce from going to waste. It's just so delicious. I love it. All of your weeknights can be made so much easier with foolproof step-by-step -step recipes that can be cooked and ready in 30 minutes or less. HelloFresh is not just for dinners, you guys, and HelloFresh offers meals tailored to any and all of your dietary needs. Also, HelloFresh is the first carbon neutral meal prep and delivery company. So you guys, if you're interested in trying out HelloFresh, fresh this fall. Trust me, it's going to save you so much time and money and it's going to taste great. You can go to hellofresh.com and use my code Raleigh65 to get 65% off your order and free shipping. Again, that's Raleigh65. Definitely check them out, you guys. It's going to be the first link down below. But you guys, I know why you came. Let's get into the video. We obviously have to start off this Raleigh Reacts by doing a little bit of an update slash recap to my last video. If you're unfamiliar with the morons that I reacted to in my last video, um, I'm just gonna tell you that you need to go watch the video to get up to speed because I really, I can't say anything else. They said a lot of really offensive things and a lot of just really terrible things and they have since responded to me. So the first thing I wanted to do in this video is just kind of go over their response and uh, that's about it. They don't deserve any more of my time. I honestly wasn't gonna put this in the video, but because their response is so hilariously bad, I just have to. Oaks Hill Arabians responded to my video by saying, you could do a better job than that at Raleigh Lilith. Can you make another one and mention his hair and choice of shampoo he uses next time? He really hates people talking about his hair. No period. First of all, I don't talk about things that have no meaning or value in the conversation, unlike you guys. You guys attack people in every which way you can because your methods of verbal communication are basically no better than a five-year-old. Instead of responding to constructive criticism like adults and like real business people that you claim that you are, which you're not, you guys just attack people on random stuff that has absolutely nothing to do with what they're saying about you. 
if they really genuinely believed that my criticism of their writing was wrong, they would have addressed all of the points that I brought up in my video and responded accordingly as to why they felt like I was wrong or being unfair. But they're basically making my point and they're further proving my point in being correct of my assumption of them and assessment of them. Top comment was them. And they said, to be fair, we didn't know the rainbow meant the pony had died. We just thought she was from the LGBTQ LMNOP people. The pony is probably so happy it doesn't have to put up with that lady's hugs and kisses all day. Run free, little pony, run free. I mean, what do you even say to somebody who posts something like that on social media? Irrespective of how somebody feels about certain political issues, you as a business should not be posting your thoughts and your feelings about political issues if you're trying to run a horse training business. These people clearly don't have a legitimate business because if they did, they wouldn't be posting stuff like this. So they're just dragging themselves and digging themselves a deeper hole. It's blatantly apparent that you guys don't have a real business. And this should honestly be a huge red flag to every single person that's in the Arabian industry because these people should be banned from all of the events. Maybe that'll send them a message. I mean, they really struck a nerve, dude. They're, they're kind of fighting for their life right now because people are really just hammering them over that comment. What the fuck is wrong with you people? First off, if you're a business, why are you acting this way? Completely unprofessional. Potential clients can and will look at this. And what do you think you are telling your customers? They don't have any customers. I just want people to know that. These people don't have any clients. They don't have any customers. They probably don't even have two dimes to rub together. So my, my point by saying this is these people are not professionals. They're not people who are actually producing quality horses within the Arabian industry and everybody knows that. You're saying we are combative, have abusive tendencies, can't take constructive criticism, have no humility, and will confuse the shit out of your horse. Secondly, who taught you to train horses? Because what you're doing in the videos makes no fucking sense. You're pulling on the horse's face for no reason, punishing the horse for no reason, riding like a sack of crap, take some responsibility, and instead of responding Responding to comments with snarky, immature responses, take a step back and really think about what you're doing to the animal. Is it humane? Are you giving the horse a fair chance to do what you're asking? Have you done the proper foundation training? Is the horse really ready to be started? As an equestrian and somebody who has worked with Arabian show barns and show Arabians in the U.S. for the last 14 years, it's extremely disappointing to see the industry I love be represented so poorly. The point is to draw people in and show them how how incredible these animals are. Not to shed a negative light on the industry that we're lucky to be a part of. These horses do not owe you anything. Have some respect for the animal, if nothing else. Thanks. I mean, I, I don't really have to say anything because I think that person really summed it up. They're not going to remove the posts because they don't want to admit that they're wrong. And by removing the posts, they're admitting that they're wrong. They also disabled comments on this post for a while and then re-abled the comments because I think they were getting called out for basically admitting they were wrong by disabling comments. So these people are just ego-driven. They don't want to admit that they're bad trainers and that they don't know what they're doing. And my video is probably the first time that anybody has shoved it in their face that they don't know what they're doing. You know you've lost the argument when you're making a post about how you're glad that a woman's horse died you know <laughs> okay so moving on uh god this one looks like it's gonna be a horse trailering nightmare uh great <laughs> Okay, so they have a halter on the horse, they've got a man on the horse's back, 
They've got a rope around the back end of the horse with three additional people. A guy leading the horse with a rope around the horse's muzzle. This looks like a disaster waiting to happen. Now they're adding a jacket over the horse's head. I, I'm assuming because they think it's going to calm the horse down. Let's see how that works. This is so depressing. The laugh is because I just died a little bit inside. For those of you who follow me on Patreon or YouTube members, which if you don't know, I usually upload about one video a week on Patreon or YouTube members, something that I talk a lot about is Link's trailering because we always do trailer practice with Link every single day when I'm done riding. We do it for a very specific reason and it's because trailering is the one thing that is ingrained in my horse's mind as the scariest fucking thing he ever has to do in his life. So if I ever want my horse to go into a trailer, we have to consistently do trailer training every single day or else when the day comes where he needs to be trailered to go to a vet, if we haven't practiced it for about a week, he's not gonna go in the trailer. Now, for those of you who know, I've had Link since he was two years old. I've had him for over a decade, and Link has always hated trailering since he was a baby. And I genuinely feel that the reason he hates trailering so much has to do with some sort of situation that he was placed in when he was being rescued from the backyard facility that he was rescued from as a baby. And it probably looked something like this, like what these idiots are doing to this poor horse, only Link was much smaller and it was ingrained in his brain and in his memory from a very young age that trailering is extremely traumatic and painful. Because I guarantee you, someone or a group of people did this same stuff to Link when he was a baby. And guess what? It's been over a decade and my horse still is hesitant to go into a trailer every single day. A lot of people fail to realize the amazing ability for a horse to remember things that happened years and years ago. Horses don't just forget stuff, especially extremely traumatic events that happen to them. Whenever you're trailering a horse, you have to be super careful and make sure that you go about it the right way or else that horse is probably never going to want to go in a trailer ever again and it's going to be ludicrously hard to load them into a trailer if you ever have to. Link has had so many issues and I've talked about this a lot because he is consistently the worst horse that every single trainer that I've had work with him has told me they've had to work with when it comes to trailering. 
I'm not kidding. I've worked with dozens of trainers and I've talked a lot about this on my Patreon and YouTube members. And every single trainer has consistently said he is the worst horse when it comes to trailering. If there's a ramp, he won't put all of his feet inside the trailer. He leaves a couple of his feet on the ramp. Or if it's a step up, he leaves his back feet stepped out of the trailer. He won't go all the way in. He also won't go in a trailer if somebody is standing by the back door because he thinks that that person is gonna shut the door behind him. So he won't go in. If you do manage to get him to step inside a trailer, he immediately freaks out and he starts throwing his head up, rearing, falling back out of the trailer. Um, a lot of times he will take off running, he will pull, and he has nearly dislocated my shoulder a couple times, nearly dislocated a couple of trainer's shoulders a couple times. So when I tell people that my horse is the absolute worst horse in the world when it comes to trailering, I'm not kidding. <laughs> he is so unbelievably bad and we work with trailering him every single day, but normal methods of trailering and uh, trailer training don't work with him because you can't overstimulate him around a trailer or else he will literally freak out. There can't be more than a couple people working with him or else if there's a group of people there, he starts to panic thinking that you're gonna lock him inside the trailer. Now, mind you, Link is a lot better at trailering now, you know, a decade later, but that's only because we practice trailering every day when we're done with our riding. So I can't even begin to tell you guys the reason for that story is because I'm explaining the gravity of emotional and psychological damage that they're doing to this horse. People really underestimate the importance of proper trailer training. If you don't go about it the right way, or if you don't train your horse and you're rushing to get them somewhere so you whip them several times to get them into a trailer and then trap them in there, you're going to cause psychological damage to your horse and it's going to be 20 times, if not 100 times harder to get them in the trailer the next time you're trying to get them in the trailer because they're gonna know that you're gonna trap them in there. They're gonna know that it's gonna be painful. And even if the next time you go about it in the more responsible way, they're still gonna remember that one time. And so there's gonna be a hesitancy every single time you do this. Abusing horses to go inside a trailer is so unbelievable terrible. Not to mention that a horse's nasal bone actually thins out towards the tip of it and becomes significantly more fragile as the face goes on the longer it gets. You know, you're placing such a serious amount of pressure with that rope around the lower part of the horse's muzzle. I wouldn't be surprised if these people snapped the tail end of the horse's nasal bone in half with this amount of pressure that they're applying. This is literally the most disastrous horse trailering video I've ever seen and this is literally almost guaranteed exactly what happened to Link as a baby and he still is traumatized by that 10 years on. Okay, taking a break from that, this last video that I wanna discuss is a heavy video, but it's, it's super important for me to discuss this with you guys. This actually happened right near where I live, which I'm only gonna live here for a little bit longer. As you guys know, I'm moving to Washington State. I currently live in Southern California, but this actually happened right down the street from my house and this was all over the news here in Southern California. I wanted to use this as a teaching opportunity in today's video to remind everyone why it's so important to either A, not ride your horse at night, B, not ride your horse at night without proper lighting, or C, don't ride your horse at night unless you're wearing proper reflective gear. Next to my house here in Riverside, California, there was actually a car crash this past Sunday 
and the car, you can look up some of the raw videos online, they're pretty graphic. From a few of these articles, it says that the rider of the horse, which is presumably a young girl, was actually bucked off the horse, the horse seemed to have spooked to something, or was not used to being ridden at night, one of the two and the horse threw the rider and ran out in the street, which is a main road here in Southern California, and got hit by a car at about 50-something miles an hour. Italian Chief, where are we and what occurred here this evening? Uh, we're currently in the city of Harupa Valley at the intersection of Limonite and Ridgeview. Uh, this evening, a automobile struck a horse. Uh, we had an auto versus horse incident. Uh, the driver of the vehicle was uninjured in the crash. The rider of the horse uh, was taken to a local hospital with minor injuries. Was there anybody else in the vehicle at the time? Uh, we don't believe so. Uh, we've done a thorough check of the vehicle. Honestly, it's insane to me that the, the driver of the vehicle was not seriously injured. I mean, that's insane. Uh, the only, only uh, person still occupying the vehicle is the actual horse. All right, and on, and on a sad note, That is correct. Uh, the horse has sustained life-threatening injuries. We do have a vet and route to euthanize the horse, as well as uh, county animal control to assist in that process. Perfect. One last question for you. How long do you anticipate your crews being on scene tonight? I anticipate probably a minimum of another hour of commitment by Riverside County Fire Department resources, uh, and it should be noted that Limonite is closed between Atawanda and Ridgeview. So from what a lot of the news stories said, the vet was en route, they were unable to remove the horse from the vehicle, and the horse did sustain life-threatening injuries. The raw video right after the crash happened is, is significantly worse, there's a lot of screaming happening, but from what it seems like, the horse was euthanized within probably an hour's period uh, from the actual crash, and the horse most likely broke a lot of bones, probably had some severe lacerations, potentially cuts from the windshield glass, which you can see in some of the video footage that there's a significant amount of blood in the vehicle. And again, it's absolutely wild and crazy that the driver was unharmed. I mean, that's insane to me. But I did see a bunch of people that were commenting and saying a bunch of stuff on the news about how drivers need to pay attention more and drivers need to focus more on the roads. And honestly, as an equestrian, this is not the driver of the vehicle's fault. And I think it's important as equestrians that we acknowledge when it's our responsibility and our fault and this unfortunately falls back on the the rider it is the rider's fault the rider wasn't wearing any reflective gear the rider was not riding anywhere that had proper lighting for vehicles to be able to see the horse or the rider within enough time to stop as unfortunate as the situation is that the horse was euthanized it's important to learn from other riders' mistakes here. And a lot of people really underestimate how dangerous it is to ride horses by cars, especially if your horse is not properly trained. I always tell people that if you're gonna ride your horse next to a roadway, your horse needs to be trained to stop if you fall off, to not freak out around loud noises, and your horse needs to know that it's not okay to be running out into the road and that cars are dangerous, that your horse needs to give vehicles a significant amount of space. Because the thing is, horses do not belong on roadways. Roadways are for cars. And unless there's a specific area for horse crossings to be happening, horses should not be being ridden on roads anyway. And I've seen a lot of people, which I find to be very upsetting, including the rider, blaming the driver of the car, saying the driver of the car should have been paying attention. The driver of the car should have had enough time to slow down. Well, guess what? When you're out driving in the middle of the night, 
and there's not much lighting around and horses are not supposed to be on the roadways, you as a driver are not going to be ready or prepared for a 1200 pound animal running out into the road at the last second. So I think this is a very sad story and it's a very sad incident, but it's important to learn from other riders mistakes. I don't recommend that anybody rides their horse on or around roadways unless it's absolutely necessary necessary and your horse has the proper training. I mean, I feel really bad for this girl all around. She lost her horse, but ultimately at the end of the day, I feel worse for the horse and I feel bad. I honestly feel like this horse was failed in a lot of ways. Anyway, guys, that's all I had to say for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. I know this was a long one, but we had a lot to discuss in this video. Again, a massive thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring me. I truly love them. Definitely hit that link down below, you guys. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code Raleigh65 for 65% off your order plus free shipping. Thank you so much for supporting me, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.